Hello everyone, welcome to the Gas Mask Collecting for Beginners video. Several people have requested this video, so yeah, I'm doing it now. And like, this video is going to be directed at people who are very new to the hobby of collecting gas masks or people who want to get into the hobby but they do not know where to start off. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first question that a lot of people ask is like, where do I buy gas masks from? And I'd say the best place to buy gas masks is eBay because it's, you know, it's a World Wide website where you can buy gas masks from all over the country and all over the world. So yeah, you can find a lot of good stuff on there. Yeah, I've, you know, found some pretty amazing stuff on there and just overall my favorite website. But like another place that you could uh, check out for gas masks is Etsy. I mean, they don't have too much rare, interesting stuff on there, but you know, some good stuff does pop up from time to time, but not as much as eBay because you know, people use eBay more. But like another good place to find gas masks is like surplus stores. So if you're driving by a surplus store and you see one, you know, if you want a gas mask, go ahead and pop in and see what they have. But yeah, eBay definitely is the best place to buy gas masks. And another question that people will ask is that, okay, so I've got some gas masks, but like, where do I keep them? And yeah, I'd say the best place to keep your gas masks is in a climate, very climate controlled area or room or something. It's just, some, it's like somewhere that's not hot or cold. So yeah, get, keep your gas masks away from heaters or air conditioners or just, just something like where nothing's blowing on it. Just keep room temperature and keep it away from hot and like really cold stuff. And keep it away from water gas masks. Like, you know, you can wash gas masks with water, but like still it's best to keep them away from water just to keep them in pristine condition. And if you want to keep your gas masks on a shelf, I'd recommend like making sure that they cannot fall off the shelf. And to keep the masks in better shape, I would also recommend putting their face forms in their face piece. But like if you don't have a face form, then just, you know, stuff newspaper in there just to kind of keep the shape of the mask. I would refrain from hanging your gas masks by their head harnesses because, you know, that can stretch them out over time and damage them and that's not good. I would also refrain from keeping your gas masks on styrofoam heads because I heard that styrofoam can damage rubber over time and either way, if styrofoam damages rubber or not, it's still not good to, you know, have your gas masks on any sort of dummy head for a long period of time because that also stretches out the head harnesses. But like if you're just doing a five minute photo shoot, then yeah, put it on a styrofoam head or dummy head or whatever. It's just for five minutes just to get some quick pictures and you know, it's, it's not, that's not, you know, prolonged periods of time, so that's okay. But yeah, on, but yeah, best place to store gas masks in my opinion is like on a shelf with a face form, making sure the masks cannot fall off and just keep the gas masks away from water, like hot, like really hot air or cold air, just keep your gas masks in a very climate controlled room. So uh, yeah, that's something important to remember. So there will be some collectors, you know, who just like to collect gas masks for like the way they look, but other collectors will be interested in collecting gas masks for the history and backstory of the gas masks, as well as how they look because, you know, gas masks are, you know, pretty cool. So yeah, that brings us to the next question. Where do I find accurate information on gas masks? Well, that definitely involves some like digging around, but like for US gas masks, the best sources of information come from technical manuals, field manuals, like, you know, and documents and articles. But for other foreign gas masks, that gets a little more tricky, but you know, they all have, you know, instruction booklets and stuff. But you can also find uh, articles and documents online, but you kind of have to cross check and make sure your source is accurate by asking around and just comparing articles and see what they and see if they same and see if they say the same information and just ask around and see hey you know this thing is reliable you can like also learn from other experienced collectors but i would definitely like recommend doing original research cuz you know that's helpful but there's nothing wrong with learning from people like getting a few tips here and there that's that's okay i am a mixture i you know get pointers and tips from people, but I also do original research. So yeah, I am a mixture. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, yeah, you could, if you want to, you could just completely learn uh, information from like somebody, but then, you know, <laughs> I 
A good example would be Weapon System 93. A lot of people use that dude as a fact. And I'm not saying, I mean, like, people use whatever he says as a fact. They take it as, like, for truth and, like, they take it for granted and stuff. But, like, honestly, Weapon System 93 is really good for basic information on gas masks. But other than that, he just gives out, like, false information and just doesn't, like, know half a thing about any of his gas masks. But that's okay. He's definitely one of those collectors that enjoys collecting gas masks for just, you know, the sake of collecting them because, you know, they're pretty cool. He doesn't know too much, but whatever. I know a lot of people are probably going to get upset at the fact I said that, but, you know, screw it. <laughs> I can have my opinion. You can have yours. Let's just leave it at that. As I was saying, if you choose, you can just learn from one person or a couple people, but that's why it helps to, like, look up documents and find field manuals and technical manuals so that way you can have a wider source of, like, sources of information and stuff, you know? But, like, as I was saying, nothing wrong with getting a few pointers here and there, but just better to just... Like, that goes for everything. Like, even if, like if you find one document, like, it's good to try to find other documents. Because, like, you cannot just get your information from one source. You have to look around and determine if it's reliable or not. And if you are a part of, like, the gas mask community, or if you just collect gas masks in general, you will probably have heard or will hear uh, the term that don't use that filter, it's not safe because it contains asbestos. Now, I'm going to make a video on filter safety, like, in the video after this, so just look out for that. Before I wrap this video up, I would just like to say that if you're going to, like, handle your gas masks, definitely try to handle them with care, like, try not to get the eyepieces dirty. Just handle them very gently. That's if the like, gas masks are in pretty, you know, beat up condition and you're trying to preserve them as much as possible. But you could do that for any gas mask if you're really trying to preserve it. Yeah, people collect for different reasons. Yeah, I personally collect gas masks because, you know, they're really cool, the history is fascinating, and I, like, just love the way they look. And, but yeah, you can, uh, collect gas masks however you want. This video is just, you know, advice and tips and tricks and pointers. But, like, in no way am I trying to force my beliefs on you. Because, you know, that's kind of, you know, mean. But, yeah, that's just advice. So, yeah, that was the uh, video. I hope you enjoyed. Definitely leave a comment because, like, I need feedback on this video. I want to know what you think. So, uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.